Let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Welcome, everyone. My name is Ranchelle Van Bryce, and you are here with me on Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Um, for those of you who can't see me, every time that music plays, I start to dance. I love dancing, love dancing. In fact, I dance everywhere. I could be in the grocery store and you'll see me bust in a move. So today's topic, of course, let's get to, let's talk about that. I'm sure you don't want to hear about me dancing in the grocery store. It's really about success and how you create your own success. So like, what would success look like for you? I love this question because I think that everyone has a different definition. And I believe that when you're creating success, it should actually be about how you want to create success. But more importantly, or maybe no, not more, but just as important, what about your team and your family? So how do they define success, right? I think that's so important. So if you've taken the time to reflect upon what the key is to success, in particular yours. And this is what I want to talk about today, because there really seems to be a divide when it comes to success. People either feel successful or it's something that's so elusive and causes so much stress and strain. And this is uh, part of my story was this elusiveness of success and what that meant for me. And so I'm going to share some of that with you as, uh, as well today. So questions, you know that I love questions. So when have you felt the most successful? When have you felt the least? What's the difference for you? Where do you feel it in your body? That's another question that I love, right? And is it because you felt successful when you achieved something, you met a destination and you could check off that box? And perhaps maybe you didn't feel successful when you went towards this goal or you had an intention and it didn't quite work out the way that you exactly wanted it. And that's kind of what happened with me. It was like, sure, I had the success, but it didn't look exactly the way that I thought. And in the end, I didn't feel uh, successful. And that was super, super hard, uh, hard on so many levels, right? And I think that happens a lot, which is one of the reasons why, of course, I, I've uh, named my show Ignite Your Success with Ranchal because I want to talk about success at all levels and really dive deep into all the layers of that. So whether you're listening to me live or you're listening to the recording, welcome to The Key to Your Success. And again, my name is Ranchal Van Bryce. I want to thank you for joining me. Um, you know, one of the things that I often forget to do, uh, especially here on the on this show, is to tell you a little bit about who I am. And so I am a coach, a consultant, and I love working with CEOs, business owners, and entrepreneurs who want to be number one in their industry um, or who are number one in their industry. And one of the things that happens as you're moving towards this is uh, as successful people or people who are looking to, I'm going to use the word achieve success, are really one of the things to the success is to confront their fears and limiting beliefs. And this is what I love to do. I love inspiring people towards moving them towards self-empowerment. And I think self-empowerment's kind of got a bad rap lately, right? It's one of those overused words that people may or may not agree with or may not understand. Kind of like, I love the word purpose. Uh, and I love living my life with purpose, on purpose, in purpose. So self-empowerment, what is that really? And I, for me, I would define self-empowerment as uh, when I got to a place where, for the most part, because I never believe in it being absolutes, but for the most part, when I let go of what other people thought of me, when I let go of the expectation of what others had, and when I stopped defining success based on being validated outside of myself. I would say that's when I moved into self-empowerment, when my self-love and my self-esteem, my self-growth really, really exploded. Because here's some of the things that I believe about business, well, and life. I believe that we should create a life and our business or profession is a vehicle to that life. And I believe that flow and ease, pardon me, our natural state. And I don't mean flow and ease is challenge free. I just believe that that's our natural straight. And I also believe that relationship with self 
should be the most important relationship. Um, that is so very important. So if any of that resonates with you, I really do invite you to connect with me. There's lots of ways you can connect with me. You can email me. My email will come up um, throughout the day. You can check me out on Twitter. I mean, any of the link and the social sites, I'm there. And so if this is resonating with you, I do encourage you to, to reach out. Okay. Let's talk success for sure. The actual definition of success, I, and, I, and I, love, I love the power of words and the power of definition. So dictionary.com uh, talked about success as the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. So like the accomplishment of, take a moment and feel that. That according to the dictionary and according, I think, to a lot of um, individuals, to society, success is when you accomplish the aim. And this is what's dangerous about the, the current definition of success, in my humble opinion, because it's about the end result. It's about the journey. It's not about the journey. What if we reframe that? What if you looked at success differently? And in my very first podcast here uh, at Inspired Choices Network, I talk about this. And so if you haven't heard it, I do encourage you to go and listen to it. What if we change what success means to us individually? What if it happens to be about, as I said, the journey and not the destination? Here are some great examples. So in um, weight loss, right? Someone will deem themselves successful when they've achieved said weight loss. So let's say you're wanting to lose 20 pounds and you say, okay, I will have accomplished, achieved my aim, my purpose at 20 pounds. And then, and only then will I be successful. Do you see how crazy that is? Because look at all the steps that are necessary to actually lose 20 pounds. So there's like a whole mindset shift that needs to happen. Chances are you're going to have to change the way that you hydrate yourself. More than likely, you're going to have to change the way that you eat and use uh, fuel or food as a fuel or energy. You're going to have to add some sort of movement. Chances are you're going to have to take a look at different supplements and to see what kind of supplements might support you in this journey of, of weight loss. You might have to change your um, sleep patterns, your sleep habits. Uh, you might want to not uh, drink alcohol for the duration. I mean, there's a whole bunch of little itty bitty, tiny little steps that when accumulated have this huge impact. So what if we change that definition in that example alone and said success is when I drink three, li three liters of water or success is as I am drinking three liters of water. Or success is um, meal prep done on Sunday. It didn't mean that all the meals were followed, but meal prep was done on Sunday. Success means, right, the, the, time, the time to work out was put in my calendar, right? Then another success is, woohoo, I went to the workouts, right? So there's all of these pieces. But if I only thought of it to be the accomplishment of the thing, and I set aside a, a period of time to accomplish that thing. And I didn't get there in the time that I wanted or how I wanted. Then by that definition alone, I'm not successful. You know, I had this experience that I'm sure that you probably have your own experiences that you can think of. But when I owned the Curves franchises, I, uh, one of my goals was to create um, uh, franchises. So I um, ate locations and I wanted to create a million dollars in revenue and for some people they're like oh no big deal but for others that might be a really big deal now what was important at the time was uh the memberships were 39 dollars a month right and then they eventually they went up to 49 but at this time they were I think like 39 dollars a month so that's a lot of members. That's a lot of $39 to create a million dollar a year revenue. But you know what happened when I got there? I was disappointed, right? I literally, um, you know, I talked to my business partner. She phoned me to let me know she had just done the books 
and that we had cleared over a million dollars in revenue at that time. It was before the year, uh, the year end. And I really, truly thought that I would celebrate. And instead I had a moment of that's really cool. And then many moments of tears, disappointment, frustration, and anger, because the cost to have that um, meet that goal was huge, right? My health was suffering. My relationship with my partner, with my uh, former husband was suffering. Right? Um, I had ensured that my relationship with it, my kids were as solid as possible. And in order to do that, one of the commitments I made was I would be home every night. And I had eight fitness centers that spanned two provinces. So that meant a lot of driving. That meant a lot of up at 4 a.m. on the road between 5.30 and 6 and home by nine. And yes, I had met my commitment. I had met that it would be successful if and at what cost. And so really, it was a time when I started to realize that if I only looked at that success as a destination, um, that I would more often than not be disappointed at the end at the end thing. So what about you? Can you think of something that you would have thought would have been this huge celebration and then you accomplished the thing and instead you were like me and you weren't. I mean, I remember, I remember crying, having a big bath and, a, and having a, a beautiful glass of wine and crying because I was like so disappointed and I really thought there was something wrong with me because I couldn't feel happy with this huge, huge success. So let's start with, let's redefine success. Why would you do that? Well, you know, can it be a journey? Can you look at it as I gave you the example about the weight loss? Can you look at your success as a journey? Can you have markers along the way that you can celebrate? Uh, because celebration is so important. And it's something that I see over and over again with my clients that they're hesitant to celebrate. They're hesitant to do and give themselves a yes or a high five because they feel like then they would be bragging right? They would be bragging and there would be too much pride and that is bad. So is that even kind of a little crazy that we are not even celebrating our successes because a lot of us have been told, right, to be humble. And there's truth in that. A lot of us have been told, you know, who do you think you are? Are you all that in a bag of chips? And so when we have success, when we have the journey of success, when we create success, manifest success, accomplish success? Do you give yourself a high five or do you just quietly go about your day? Who do you celebrate with? Who do you celebrate with? And it's so important, of course, that you celebrate. So what would be the opposite of success for you? What's the opposite of success? Now, these are really important questions. So what's the opposite of success? Now, of course, my handy dandy dictionary.com, right? Here's what uh, the opposite of success is in the dictionary. Defeat, failure, forfeit, loss, misfortune, sadness, sorrow, unhappiness, inferiority, and unfulfillment. How is that the opposite of success? Well, based on the definition, that makes sense. So again, can we create a new definition for what is not successful? Is, does, if you fail at something, does that mean you don't have success? And for a lot of us, that's the truth. For a lot of us, when we don't have success, we feel that we've failed. And a lot of, a lot of people have a really hard time with failure, right? Or time with forfeiting something or a hard time with misfortune or a hard time with sadness or being unfulfilled. So again, what would happen if you changed the, what the opposite of success looked for, like for you um, and change the experience, maybe not even the definition, but what if you changed what the meaning was for you? What if you changed what that experience of non-success was for you? What if you started to look at the blessings of failure or why defeat might be a great thing or why forfeit is and why loss isn't really that big of a deal or why being unhappy is a key indicator for change or why being unfulfilled isn't necessarily not about success. 
but about an opportunity uh, for you to do things differently. So those are two pieces, right? Defining what does success mean for you and defining what uh, not having success or not being successful is for you, right? So let's go to our first break of the show. And when we return, we will discuss more about the key to your success. And I'm going to share with you one of the processes that I use to create success in my life. We're going to do a deep dive on that. So you're listening to Ignite Your Success. Uh, myself, Ranchal Van Bryce. Thank you so much. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle here on Inspired Choices Network. Now, before we left, I just talked about two really simple pieces. One is, and so funny, of course, it talks about that in my intro, is your definition of success. How are you defining it? How are you defining non-success? And what if you change the way that you looked at those things? They became less about achievement-oriented energy and more about this process about, about the journey, truly about the journey. I promised you before we went to break that I would talk to you about one of the processes that I use <coughs> to create success in my life uh, and in my business. Uh, there's a few that I use in a regular business and I thought I would just uh, share this one with you. Now, what I'm sharing with you is my process. It's my system and I'm going to invite you to take what you like and leave the rest. This is one way of probably a gazillion ways that you can create success in your own life. It doesn't really matter how I create success in my life. What really matters is you. And what matters is your definition of success and the different things that you can uh, do, the different ways that you can be so that you can have the success uh, that you crave. Because I believe that all of us crave su success. We're just not really sure of the steps to, to get there. And I have a very non-neurotypical way of functioning. And so this is kind of based on what's best for my non-neurotypical brain. Um, part of that is routine. I'm going to share with you some of the routines that I do. So routines are important for me. Um, and they're important for me because it truly gives me a sense of, I'm going to use this. So those of you who are not here live with me and are not actually watching, uh, watching the video on TV, I'm air quoting. So uh, routine provides a sense of safety, security, and control for me. And so when I feel that way, when I really feel solid, I feel planted, right? I, um, I feel grounded, then regardless of what happens throughout the day, I know that I can move through it. I'll use words like I can handle it, right? 
So this is one of the reasons why I have this particular routine that I'm sharing with you, particular steps to success. And so I'm going to talk about what it is. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about how you do that. So if you can grab a pen and paper, if you can't, it's okay. Guess what? You can listen to this later. Ooh, you can listen to this afterwards. I'm not going anywhere. All right. So if we change the meaning of success, we can move into the practice of success. So what would it be like for you to move into the practice of success? It's kind of like yoga. We don't do yoga, right? We might have a yoga practice. It's one of the reasons why I think exercise, uh, we should have a, a, a physical regime or physical practice versus an exercise program, right? I think practices are great. Practices are great just simply for the word. We get to practice. So we get to practice what this looks like. Some days it's going to look really good and some days it's going to be a bit more of a challenge, but it is a practice of success. So let me start with the first piece, right? So the first uh, part of my system is to have a very strong morning routine, right? And, I'm, and it can be your morning routine. I'm going to share with you my morning routine. It took me um, many years to come to a place where this is the one that's, that uh, links me to the space of having a success practice and grounds me in the foundations of the beliefs that I want to have and grounds me in the foundations of uh, integrating and embodying something called the universal truths. So my morning routine is breath work. So I start my day with breath, breath work. Um, I believe in habit stacking, right? So if I'm going to change some habits, I need to do things differently. So I have a French pressed coffee every single morning. My mornings start and there it's, it's really a wide range. My mornings will start anywhere from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., Sometimes, depending on what's going on, I might be up as early as three, but I would say in general, they start 536, right? I'm a slow waker upper. So I, when I set my alarm, I have the intention of waking up gradually. So as I'm making my coffee, as I boil in the water, get everything ready, then I sit down and I do my breath work. There are tons of um, information online about breath work. So I don't, I don't think there's a wrong method to do the breath work. Uh, I do I do soma breath work. I also do, uh, um, oh, dragon breath work, uh, breath of fire. So there's lots of ones I'll do depending on how I feel, right? When I'm done my breath work, then I move into a meditative practice. So uh, meditation for me is just uh, accessing the quietness of my mind and my soul. Now, does that mean I try to empty my head of all thoughts? No. What it means for me in my meditation is I notice the thoughts that I'm going to, and I actually assess whether that's uh, a positive thought, whether that's an empowering thought, or if some of my yeah buts or limiting beliefs come up. Right? So my meditative practice might look different than your meditative practice. And I will do that sometimes only five minutes. Sometimes I'll do that for 25 minutes. I don't have such a structured morning routine where it has to be a certain amount that to me um, doesn't feel good. So I, I, I do ishes, right? I get up at five ish, right? I do 15 ish minutes of breath work, right? I do 15 or 30 minutes ish of meditation. And then when I'm done that, I move into what I refer to as my gratitude journal, right? Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit deeper on gratitude in one of the other systems or processes I talk about. I'm mentioning it here because I have a strong, uh, strong gratitude practice and I really like journaling. So I don't journal in the sense of like, what are all the thoughts and feelings that are going on in my head? I journal my, I am so happy and grateful now that statements. So that's how I journal. And I write also journal I am statements, owning who I want to be. So I use my journal for that. 
I also use my journal for a brain dump because of my non uh, non neurotypical way of thinking. If I hold on to things in my head, I spiral. So as I'm journaling in my statements, I'll have anywhere from you know, it feels like a gazillion to say three to 25 thoughts that are randomly in my head that I need to release so I can move into creative. So I will just write those down in my journal. And it's not a task list or a to-do list. It is a random thought brain dump, right? So if we go back to how I define success, I define success all about being the journey, not about the destination. I define success as my daily experiences. Can I create joy? Can I create prosperity? Can I create magic? Can I create passion? Can I create a, a, the sense of lightness and luminosity in my life? And so everything that I do is based on my definition of success. That helps me decide who I want to be, the thoughts that I need to, to create, and what I need to do, all based on my definition of success, right? So I move into this particular gratitude. Now, those three pieces, breath work, meditation, and a gratitude journal, here's some of the science. It will lower your cortisol levels. I actually wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Uh, it increases your metabolism. These are things that I just do. And I'm like, oh yeah, there's science behind it. And I feel good. Why do I feel good? Well, I'm, I'm lowering my cortisol. I'm increasing my metabolism. I'm increasing my oxygen level. And it actually rewires your brain. It creates new neural networks. So this is a, a really, really important for me. And it's solid. Now, one of the other pieces for me, for my definition of success is it doesn't matter if it's a Monday or if it's a Saturday, my routine is the same. I don't have like a weekend routine. I used to. I used to have a weekend routine and a weekday routine. And my weekend routine was I'm going to sleep in, right, um, until I wake up. And, uh, and I may or may not do any of these things. And what I found was that, that uh, forward, I would have forward movement in my life and business during the week and getting myself out of routine, it took me longer to get back into routine. So Monday wouldn't feel as magical because of the routine I had for Saturday and Sunday. I'm the only person who controls my routine. So I started to experiment a little bit. Well, what happens if I do this, right? So what happens if maybe I don't get up at 5.30, perhaps maybe I get up at 7.00. And one of the reasons this works really well for me is, um, and how I created even a more structure around that, is every morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, I lead a morning mindset group. So I have a group of women that come together uh, and we do this, it's called, called my Millionaire Morning Mindset. So it's... Um, Actually, yesterday, one of, the, one of the ladies said, it's like having your own like Tony Robbins and Abraham Hicks, for those of you who know that is, uh, wine, uh, up and, and one. So one of my superpowers is to intuit what's going on with the globe, but also to intuit with what's going on with the people who are on the call. And so I receive messages and then I share those messages with the group. Now, that's also creates some fantastic routine. I've been doing it for almost two years um, and 364 days a year. We took Christmas Day off uh, last, uh, last year and the year before, right? But other than that, I'm there. So this is the other piece of it because then I get to express gratitude. I meditate. I do the breath work in order to get ready. So I created my own personal life and my business around what I would deem to uh, success, right? So... Uh, the next piece, of course, is to create clarity. Everything will start with clarity. A confused mind stays, that stays in confusion creates more confusion. That makes sense, doesn't it? A confused mind creates more confusion. It will stay in confusion. When you also, when you don't have clarity, it also inhibits your curiosity and creativity. 
And the last thing that happens is it increases your cortisol levels and lowers your immunity. So clarity is absolutely 100% important. The challenge truly with this is that the mind that's created your confusion often cannot unlock the clarity. Your mind that created the confusion cannot unlock it for more clarity. I'm going to talk about that later on, why that's going on and what you can do about it. But first, we're going to go into our second break. And again, I want to thank you whether you're here live with me or you're listening later on. My name is Ranchelle Van Bryce. The show is Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. And we here are on Inspired Choices Network. Thank you. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach, Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Ranchell Van Bryce, and you are here with Ignite Your Success with Ranchell here on Inspired Choices. Now, before we left on break, I gave you two... Uh, pieces of the process, the system that I use to help me create my definition of success. And it was with the success in mind. If success looks like this, what do I need to do? So one, uh, I have a really strong morning routine. And number two, uh, clarity is really important, right? Clarity of where you want to go, clarity of where you are, clarity of what you need, uh, who you need to be, clarity of what you need to do, clarity of, um, I think more of the what versus the how, because the how to do things will only come when you clear, when you've, when you've created that clarity. I mean, that's so important. So, and again, if you're resonating with anything that I, that uh, I'm saying, I really do. I, I love conversation. I'd love for you to, uh, to, you know, connect with me. I'm easy to find in the social sites, Ranchelle Van Bryce. Uh, you can also check out my website, ranchellevanbryce.com. Now, here's the thing. I just launched a brand new website on Wednesday. So I would love for you to go there, check it out. And seriously, email me if you see any mistakes, because you know what it's like to look at your stuff over and over again. I've had clients look at it. I have an editor looked at it. And I know there's still going to be mistakes on there. So please check it out. Email me at rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. And please tell me where my mistakes are. I want to know so I can, I can fix them. Okay. So strong morning routine, create clarity. And now I'm going to talk about what I refer to as a universal truth. And I mentioned it early when I have a gratitude journal. So I believe that creating gratitude, having gratitude, uh, being in gratitude is part of what I refer to as the universal truth. It's a universal law, kind of like the law of gravity is the law of gravity, gratitude. I love Raymond Hollywell's book on the 11 spiritual truths. He speaks about this one. And he actually talks about this law being, excuse me, the law of increase. So he refers to the law of gratitude as the law of increase. 
So how do you use the law of gratitude or the law of increase in your everyday life? And why would you do that? So I'm going to spend a few minutes kind of doing a somewhat dive. It's not going to be a deep dive. So I'm going to keep this really surface level. But if you want to know more, again, I encourage you to come and uh, find me. Let's connect. You're going to have conversation because this is one of the most important laws to to for me for success and uh, for prosperity and abundance which doesn't necessarily have to be success right for some people that has nothing to do with it for some people it's kind of connected and it doesn't really matter what it is for some people what matters is where you're at and what you want and how you define success so when you have a practice and again it's a practice it's not a regime right uh, a practice of gra gratitude it enables you to be lifted up and unconsciously work with, some people call it the formless substance. Some people would call it quantum, uh, the quantum field. Some people would say, then you're connected to divine source creator. For you, um, I'm not sure where you're at, but I do know for me and my practice, when I have gratitude, I feel really connected to the divine source energy within me. I feel really grounded and I feel really at peace right? And so I have this practice of gratitude. For me, I use the words, I am so happy and grateful now that. And I speak in gratitude of the things that I am grateful for, and the things that I want to manifest that I have not yet manifested, but I speak as if they uh, have happened now. I speak as it's in my present moment. For some people, a gratitude practice is called prayer. I know that for me, when I first started my spiritual journey, I had a really hard time with the word God and with the word prayer. And it was simply because when I was a child, um, I used to pray uh, to God. And um, my dad, uh, and I have permission to, to share this with everybody. So my dad uh, has been sober uh, and an AA for a very, very long time. And so part of when growing up, when things are really bad in my house, I remember trying to negotiate with God, right? I remember saying, well, if you do this, then I'll do this. And I would refer to that as prayer. Now, that's not really what prayer is. But in my limited mind, in this, this little girl mind, that's what prayer was. So when I started doing this, and when I started to go to, to Alateen, some of the things they said was have gratitude. And if the word prayer resonates with you, then use that word. But what I find sometimes with praying is it really is that it's like the if and if you do this, God, then I'll do this. It's kind of a begging. It's kind of I don't have this thing in my life. And so if you give it to me, then and see so the thing with that is that's outside of you. You're praying outside of you. So in my spiritual practice, I am one of the same of divinity. Right. And so what that does from a gratitude perspective is I can be grateful for the isness of every situation that I experience, like everything. Doesn't mean I might, I can be unhappy and grateful at the same time. So it's not like, woohoo, there's no problems or challenges. That's actually not what it's all about. But what happens is you have this, this um, power of gratitude. So how does this work? When you actually praise, you open yourself up to so let's say the infinite, open yourself up to divine intelligence. You can word, use the word creator or God, and you lift your consciousness to a higher realm and you become a greater channel to receive the good that is already there, right? So um, I have some sayings that I use all the time. God is good all the time. And he wants more for me uh, than anyone else right and so yes and you'll hear me when i when you've heard me before sometimes it's god sometimes it's goddess sometimes it's he sometimes it's she sometimes it's they i mix all the pronouns right it depends right it depends and i think what's most important though is not what i say what i call the god of my understanding whether it's my higher power divine or creator but more importantly what you want doesn't matter what i do it's really all about you so we may not fully understand the power of gratitude because our thoughts are moving faster than the speed of light. We do know that, right? So you have a thought pings the universe 
And the universe conspires to make things happen. In science, right, your brain starts to work. Uh, pardon me, your reticular activating system kicks in and you start to see the things that you are actually have gratitude for. It is the most amazing tool out there and often overlooked because we're not sure what to be grateful for. And we often will confuse gratitude with it has to be this big monumental thing, right? It can be these really, really tiny pieces. I am so grateful that last night I had seven and a half hours sleep. It was fabulous. I'm so grateful that I slept through the night, right? So I'm at an age where sometimes it gets a little warm in my bedroom and I wake up. I did not, I did not have a little mini furnace going in my body. I slept through the night. I am so grateful for that. So it can be these tiny little things that can increase your exposure to divine. It can lift you up, lift your spirits, lift your state of mind, and you will start to see more of the things that you already wanted to, to create. You'll see more of this, more of the same. So gratitude is so very, um, very important, right? And I would, again, it's a recommendation that if you don't have a gratitude practice, that you really do move into the space of understanding what a gratitude practice could do for your life. In fact, I would challenge you, take 90 days and create a gratitude practice and see how what happens in 90 days. See how you feel after 90 days. So the next part of my processing system is actually to have a system or a process to work through your challenges. When we um, first uh, came on the show, I told you that I believe that ease and flow are our natural state of being, right? I believe that ease and flow are, are a natural state of being. It doesn't mean we don't have challenges, right? I face obstacles and challenges on a regular basis, but I have a system that I use to help me see the truth in the said challenge, in that what people would refer to as a problem. One of them is, I don't believe in problems. Okay, what does that mean, right? <laughs> What that means is I don't believe there's problems. I don't believe that a problem is a problem. I believe the problem might be the way I'm defining it. The problem might mean the meaning that I'm giving the problem. But if I remove the whole idea of problems and I have no problems, like things just open up. Things become the isness, right? It becomes the isness of the situation. Again, it doesn't mean it's like joy, joy all the time. Oh, I'm so happy, right? You know, it, no, it, there's, it's like, oh, that totally sucks. <laughs> this situation totally sucks. And how can I change the way that I look at things? How can I redefine it? How can I uh, look at the beliefs that I have around this thing and change my belief? Perhaps maybe I'm looking at it through the lens of a limiting belief. If I'm, if I'm um, having a, a problem or obstacle, and I look at it through the limiting belief of I'm not enough. Well, of course it's going to hurt. But what if I am enough? What if this is just a situation? What if it has nothing to do with my value as a human being? What if I change the way I look to things, the things I look at change? My all-time favorite quote by Wayne Dyer. Change the way you look at things and the things that you look at change. What if you did that? What if you thought, I never have a problem. I only have experiences. There's no such thing as bad. I just have the isness of the thing. If you can even adopt some of that, your life will change. It will because you look at things with such a different lens. You, you produce less cortisol. You have less stress that you're holding on to, right? You're less angry, less frustrated, less doubt, less worry, less fear. Like when you start approaching your life like this, and again, I'm sharing my system because for me, success is ease and flow. It was really important for me to create more ease and more flow, which is why I defined success that way and why the systems and the processes and the things that I do are all about what's my definition of success. So some of what I'm saying won't resonate with you. So here's the thing. 
Don't throw away the whole system because I might say one thing that upsets you or triggered you, but rather look at the whole entire, the entire uh, pieces of it and go, okay, yeah, I absolutely can do that. I like that. Nope, not going to do that. Um, I encourage you to ask why you, you don't want to do that. Are you having judgment around it or it just doesn't resonate? That's different, right? So it's important for you. Um, mm, no, I'm going to rephrase that. It was important for me. I don't know what's important for you, right? It was important for me in order for me to have uh, a way to work through the challenges. And of course, I was not able to do that on my own, right? And we're going to talk about that next. I promised you before, I, I told you that your brain is wired a certain way. And in order to have clarity, you might not be able to create your own clarity. So when we get back from break, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. So let's go into our third and final break of the show. When we, were, when we return, I will wind this all up. I'm going to bring those pieces into it. And we're going to continue talking about um, what success looks like for you, how you would define success, but most importantly, what are the keys to your success? Thank you. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Again, my name is Ranshaw Van Bryce. Whether you're here with me live, I'm super excited to have you uh, uh, ignite your success here with Ranshaw on Inspired Choices Network. How about I finish that sentence? Whether you're here live or you're listening afterwards, I'm excited that you're here with me. You know, this is really about today's show is about you and on keys to your success. And so far, I've actually talked about four pieces of what uh, I do for uh, four parts of my system and process that I use to create success for myself based on my definition of success, right? And the first one, of course, I gave a talk to you was having a really strong morning routine, whatever that looks like for you. The second piece was clarity. Clarity is really important. I think uh, so in order to have you move forward and create success, understanding so much and understanding what success means for you, but also clarity about where you are and where you want to be. Next, I talked about the practice of gratitude, and I kind of did a really surface dive into the benefits of gratitude and uh, spoke probably more from a spiritual perspective than a scientific perspective. So basically the science behind this is your goal, uh, your brain, pardon me, is a goal achieving machine. And when you decide that you want to do something, your brain looks for a way to happen. It activates the RAS, the reticular activating system, moves forward and looks for ways and means. So if you're speaking about gratitude and you're speaking of things you're grateful for as if they're happening right now, your brain will start to find ways and means to make that happen. So that's what I talked about. And then I talked about it's, um, it's important for me <laughs> to have a system to work through my challenges because I do believe that ease and flow are my natural state. And I'm a human being and I own uh, businesses. And so there's always obstacles and challenges that I'm facing. I have two adult children. I have a partner. I have parents. I have sisters. I have friends, uh, right? I have a life. And with that comes obstacles and challenges. So I really rely heavily on my system that I use uh, to uh, help me move through. So I move from feeling like a victim and I move to, vict uh, to victory. So I can let go of my fears, let go of my limiting beliefs, and I can become, I would say, fearless and courageous and limitless or unlimited. And there's an entire system that I use to do that. And if you want to know more, seriously, reach out to me. This is not code for, and I say this lots, 
This is not code for, yeah, let's talk and I'm going to try to sell you something. Here's the deal. I'm a coach. If you want to hire me as a coach, I'd be happy to work with you, right? I also have uh, coaching services for coaches. I have a finance company that uh, finances coaches, uh, high-end clients so that the coaches can get paid up front. I have a membership program for coaches uh, so that you're, you don't have to look for uh, all the connections that, so you can have access to my Rolodex, all of those kinds of fun things. Uh, so certainly, yes, you can hire me, but this is not code, right? When you connect with me, it's not code for, let's do a code, a secret sales call. No, nope, no, nope, I'm not going to do that, right? Can you hire me? For sure you can. You absolutely can hire me. All right. Now, the last two pieces that I'm, I w- want to share with you, the last two processes that are important in my world to create success is movement. This is kind of one thing, my physical health, some sort of movement, hydration, and food for energy. Now, this probably, I would say, is one of my own personal biggest challenges, being completely transparent with all of you, because I believe that authenticity is key. I believe that transparency is important in order for the people that I work with to experience transformation. So movement, hydration, and food for energy. We are a triune being. We have a physical body, we have a a mind, right? And we have a soul. So mind, spirit, uh, body, however you want to uh, say that. But we are a triune being. We require our bodies for so much. And food especially is used to uh, fuel, yes, our body, but also our brain. So if you are experiencing a lack of success, I'm going to encourage you to take a look at what you're feeding your brain. Are you hydrating your brain and your body? And are you moving? Now, there are, there's so much evidence of the importance of this, but here's what I know about entrepreneurs. This is the last thing you think about. When you have time, you're going to do this. Well, guess what? You're not going to have time. You'll never have time. This is something that you need to create. Oh, that was a strong word. I would encourage you. You don't need to do anything. You can do whatever you want. But the importance of it is to be in awareness of how this affects your success. And this is what we're talking about, the keys to your success. Now, some people will do... um, need to do yoga. Other people will do better with like lifting heavy and doing uh, hit training. And again, I could spend probably an hour talking about that. And we don't have an hour. We're coming to the end here. Okay. The last piece, the mentor um, or coach, the key to success in, from my perspective and my success is I have mentors and coaches. I have both. I have some paid mentors. I have some um, mentors that don't charge me, but we, we mentor each other. I have coaches. Sometimes we coach each other, but I always have a coach that I, that I work with that I'm paying for, right? And why? Because I, although I know what I desire, I might not have clarity around what that looks like. And all I need to know is the what and the how comes about once I decide the what. But I know that I'm that my mind has created all of the obstacles and challenges that I'm facing. So I also know how difficult it is to get out of my own way. So a key and a key to my success has been day one. I hired my first coach in 2006. In 2007, my company did its first million dollars in revenue. 100%. It was because I was working with a coach. Hands down, I know that for sure. So a mentor or coach is essential. So we talked about it's it's important to gain clarity because you can't see the things, right, um, that you would normally see. So that's really, really important for the clarity piece. And the other piece I talked about is the system and the challenges. Having a system to break through your challenges. It is difficult. I have the system. I have all the training that I need, right? And I rely on my coaches and my mentors to walk me through a system so that I can see it from a different perspective. So I can see it from the lens that we're talking about, because I can't see the mess that I've created, right? And I have a system. I teach the system. And in fact, the people that I coach, or that probably coach me, 
often use my system. So this is so very, very important. Um, so you, as, you know, as we're uh, ending tonight, I wanna uh, certainly ask you to come to next week's show, which is how to move the mountain of fear. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Ranchelle returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you. Bye, everyone.